Hello folks, I am Parkira as always and today is Imperator Rome, a new series I am bringing you to the channel, just released on the 26th of this month from Paradox. So we are going to get stuck into it today and we will bring you the first episode and let's just see how we go so we are going to start as egypt today in this let's play i know it's imperator rome and you probably thought why don't you start in rome but no you know everybody else is starting in rome so we're going to just try something else a bit different today we may do rome if this takes off as a alternative series as well but we are going to start as i said with egypt they are an aristocratic monarchy and we will just get stuck into it right now in babylon 18 years ago the angry king alexander died suddenly at the age of 32 in the five years preceding his death, his continuing military success had reshaped the known world to the Greeks, his empire stretching uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The shock of Alexander's early death and his lack of a chosen successor sent shockwaves through the hierarchy of satraps and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by these potentates, styled as the Diadokoki. For many years, they and their succession had been locked in a bitter struggle over the future of the empire, drawing all nations within the sphere of influence into the conflict. The wars of the Diadochi will surely continue. Perhaps it is up to Egypt to decide how it will end. The die is cast. Just after, not too far after the death of Alexander the Great and his empire has been obviously uh, split up here into the big, uh, the main quarters of uh, how it was as well. And you'll see that Rome, the mighty Rome, is just a little baby infant really, just starting to branch out into Italy. Uh, Carthage is still around as well and Macedonia and Thrace are another couple of big uh, provinces countries empires how kingdoms perhaps have you want to call them but yes so that is the situation it is uh the current date is october 1st 304 bce so this gets stuck in i won't go too much about the ui and everything else i'll uh just kind of touch on them as we go i'm hoping you can see my mouse in this recording i uh, have notice in a couple of tests that the mouse disappears after a few moments it may pop back in there i've put a a little uh, report into the nvidia uh, forums because i am using the nvidia geforce uh, experience uh, in game recording for this because obs seems to pick up a lot of more uh, background noise uh, sometimes for some certain games I find especially if there's like wind and things like that so and I hope you can hear my voice so let me know but without further ado Mrs Magoo shall we get stuck into it so we are Egypt as I said that is how we're situated at the moment we'll just go through some of the map modes there we've got the terrain uh, the simple terrain map mode so I can just kind of show you the world and what it's all about and how the terrain is looking the one I'll be using and most people tend to use is the political map mode. Uh, we've got some other ones here. We've got the culture. So you'll see for us, we've got the Egyptian culture primarily there. Um, with the Merotic further south as well. Up here you've got the Mededian, the Scythian, obviously the Thracian. And little scatterings of other ones as well. Uh, picks back up here in uh, Britain. We've also got the religion map mode, so you'll see this Druidic, uh, and we've got Hellenic primarily there, as well as uh, Kemetic for this region that we are playing, and a little bit of Arabic and Canaanite, Jewish, Hellenic as well. Uh, yeah, region, so each region there, so you start off with a region obviously, and then the further regions are then broken down into the provinces, which makes sense. So as you can see, you know, Lower Egypt, Upper Egypt, as well you know you've got Italia, uh, Magna Gratia, Gillespie, 
call uh, goal as well. Obviously up here we've got all our things like our monarch points, we've got population, our, our gold, uh, stability. Down here we've got kind of our little tabs like uh, military tab, diplomacy, and obviously these are our um, drop downs of decisions or just notifications really. This flag here does nothing and that is our macro builder going forward so we are obviously so we are Rome are uh, roamed we are ruled by plot me uh, Sotar Lagand excuse my pronunciations I'm gonna butcher a lot all right and uh, so yes we are a is Macedonian we are an aristocratic monarchy so we've got three uh, lots of um, orator ideas here that we can get straight away uh, the type of government we have allows us to have a military and then two to Oro. So let's go and click a current idea. We've got uh, morale of armies, 10%, Tyrene costs, reinforcements. I like morale of armies. I think it's a good one. So we've got two oratory to fill out, which is down here. You can, if I want to, put a civic idea and stuff as well. We kind of get, but that doesn't give us our full bonuses um, if we do that. Uh, we can do monthly corruption. Okay, we'll do monthly general and admir admiral royalty. And we can do maximum opinion so you'll see now because we've kind of put the right ones in the right areas we have these so we've got a um, basically active modifiers if you like uh, that we have if we change one of these to say uh, another one say for a civic idea then we'd have uh, less on those as well a lot of mechanics and things I'm not up and to scratch with and I'll kind of pick a while as we go along Anyway, so let's have a look at our ruler, shall we? Okay, so uh, he's got a wife, he's got a, he's got a few kids, so his line is pretty straightforward. He's got a rival down here, and he's got one mate. So the heir here is, uh, is he uh, heir? Yeah, he's the preferred heir, so that's pretty good. And he's also obviously uh, got a, uh, some pretenders who are obviously other family members. I think you can generally keep them in track. What we're going to do straight off, to announce our reign I guess to start we're going to hold a games and that's just going to cost us a little bit of money but it's going to make everyone feel good about themselves and tickle their fancies okay so there's not much more but you can get in here and do some things with his character and he does have picks up along the way some sort of traits like he's there you can see that he's got blood of the uh, Lagadine and he's cautious as well so he loses one marshal uh, but re unit reorganization costs is 50 percent cheaper he's got personal wealth there so everyone has a personal wealth he's not currently commanding any armies uh, support yeah and that's just the support there as well for the uh, pretenders okay so that's this he's done let's have a look and have a look at our government we don't have a senator or anything because we are a monarchy, but we do have obviously uh, positions and these other positions there. I'm not even going to pronounce, not even going to try and pronounce them. All right, and further down, obviously, possible successes as well. We've got 100% legitimacy and we can show laws. So we need to, uh, to change laws, we need at least 250 uh, power there, which is up here, the oratory power. So we won't be doing any laws for a while. We look at our military. We can every at the moment, if we have 800 military power, then we can unlock a certain tradition, and they change as you go down. Each one's for a different sort of branch of uh, military, really. We can then go to our technology tree. We'll see that up here later. Our religion, we, where we can call omens, our economy. So we can currently see we are making a decent whack of money, which is pretty good. Diplomacy-wise, for Egypt, okay, so. Major power, so we're allowed four. We currently have three. So we're at Mas uh, Macedon, Thrace, and Dodd, that other place. We're guaranteeing two, and one's a subject there. And we can see here who our subjects are, who we're guaranteeing. And it also shows trade and everything else for us. Uh, decisions which we can make and change uh, our government decisions and just general game decisions. For example, we can create the lighthouse, we can reunite Alexander's empire. Our trade overview at the moment, we have nothing here apart from just two exports and two imports and a character and family. So it shows every character in my empire and you can break that further down into families. Like I said, I don't know the full mechanics. I have, you know, been watching a lot of Let's Plays or YouTube videos uh, 
prior to this as well. So let's start off with some of our notifications. So we've got an omen we can call what I like to do. We're, we're making a little bit of money. I think we're going to look at going to a nice early war. So we're going to go for Blessing of Aries and try and get uh, extra discipline of 1.3%. That's pretty good. And these generally last until uh, 1455, so five years. Now we've got an invention. The way this happens is each researcher will fill up there to get to the next level and depending on so all these swing things we can see down here are level one uh, and then it goes into level two they'll be actually replaced as these guys level up uh, and then say so if you don't take a level one you but you take the equivalent level two then the level one will become available i am I must be corrected if I'm wrong. So what we're going to do, again, we're making some money, but we have to build up some armies as well. So I'm probably going to look at... Let's have a look. Let's have a look at property tax. Just get a little bit of national tax income, 5%. So that'll last there for a while. And we can actually do another one, because uh, it does use our... What's that? Research or civic power. Um, I don't know if I want another one. What can we use that civic power for? We need to build up, build our oratory up so we can make claims. We will, and um, we're going to do a starting experience of 5% for all our units as they're getting recruited. We've got scorn families. Now, these are just families who don't think they aren't in positions that they feel they should be. Uh, you, you can kind of just ignore them um, to an extent. It uh, depends on, like, you know, uh, they could rise up, get really angry, and call them for kind of a civil war and things. So it's just something to keep an eye out. So, uh, lacking a commander, our first army, or Stratos is missing an army so what we're going to do here we're just going to see we've got uh one piece of and pin there. so see this ad astro bullius person now his he's a scorn family so we can actually probably do that he's going to giving us a five marshal though and look i'm going to put the king in charge um I'll, what i'll do is just give this guy a, a little unit i think well, for the main army we are 30k army we're definitely going to uh not put someone there so for targets who are we going to target first well we've got uh Serenica here we could target we could do uh Nebetia and probably then build through down here there is judea as well as um, samaria we can do in the in judea or we could go down and look and look at kush or um Blimania as well so I, what we're going to do, I think we're going to go through and try and secure Sinai a little bit and get a little bit more land uh, bordering the other side of the Red Sea and then maybe look at Judea and Samaria later on as well. So what we're going to do, you'll see that we're going to click on our army here. I'm oh, happy with 30k. I'm going to send them over now. I can, I can send them everywhere, but you'll notice there in the, in the tool tip that the, tells you the supply limit of each province and then the weight of that province when our army is there and how much attrition it's going to give us so if i sent my army to um Messina, it would get um five percent attrition which we don't want so we can try and get somewhere that gives us no attrition if possible or less or at least a small amount of tr attrition here and it looks like they're all going to give us about five percent <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the army over to uh, Meghara anyway. And what we'll do is probably look at splitting it in half just or splitting it until we're ready to get into the war. So he'll go there as well. What I want to do down here is recruit another army. Uh, I think we'll recruit them in uh, let's see, Maha. Let's see what we can build. Now I can't just go and build any old army i need to have the trade goods for them and a surprise oh actually we'll talk, talk about trade goods so currently we've got two out of three trade routes these are our surpluses here so we've got a surplus of fish veggies and um, glass and grain if you see there it'll tell you what each product gives you bonuses for as well now if i clicked on build units and i wanted to click on and make a heavy inventory i can't build it why? Because I lack iron. We don't have iron. So we kind of need to import that if I want to build heavy infantry. The same, for example, if I want to build a tyrene. Well, okay, I don't have wood. So things like that. So at the moment, we can only really build uh, 
archers and light infantry. We may have some products, you know, further on later on. Some other regions may have iron and wood that we can use within our region, but again, only can be built there. So what we're going to do here, we can't actually do anything because we do need to uh, have. I think it's 25 uh, civic power to enable to kick off a trade route. So once we've built that up again, we'll probably look at trying to get see if we can get some iron in here at the moment. But I think we will do is just then recruit a basic army down here. So we can do probably oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and four. I think six and four will help us for that. So he'll be built down there. And we'll just keep going. So uh, I've got the game paused. So I'm going to unpause the game and let those units move along and let our civic power and our monarch points kind of accumulate a little bit. And as we can, here we can. So we go to our macro builder. We can then build marketplaces, training camps, fortresses, and granaries. Uh, recruit cohorts. Just, you know, convert, assimilate. You can't always do it, of course. It depends if you have the products again, iron. Well, we don't have iron to import. But we could look at the trade if you looked over here for example but it's just a matter of having the civic power and seeing who is close enough kind of in our trade range i guess and may be able to bring us iron now i think we're pretty close to crete here and i do know that there is a province over here that does have iron so we may be able to enact a trade route with them and offers of trade have coming in so we've got a an offer of uh, from here uh from so Renick is requesting to import wild game. So this will give us an extra discipline for our archers and give us 50 ducats, or 0.5 each month. Yeah, we'll accept that. And this is just a little breakdown now here <clears> of <throat> some things. You get events, right? So the empire belongs to the strongest. Having built the largest empire the world has ever seen, Alexander the Great died suddenly 10 years ago. With no clear successor to the empire, his generals and... Uh, Diadochi or successors have since fought over Alexander's spoils. As one of Alexander's oldest friends, our ruler Plotmi, or Potomli, has secured the wealthiest province in the empire, Egypt, for himself. Expansion into Greece and Syria has, however, been thwarted by the antagonist Mon <coughs> Monophemus, the former satrap of Pagia, with the entire Egyptian fleet crushed at the Battle of Salamis. Antigas is perhaps the most successful of our successes, but success breeds enemies, and he now stands alone vulnerable. This is a great opportunity if we can only secure allies to oppose him. So it's kind of an, a, <clears throat> gives you an opening spiel, maybe an idea of where you can head or what you want to do. Each, I think each faction or each uh, kingdom has its own different one as well. I think Rome has a completely different one. The Empire belongs to the strongest. So we have claims, what it does, it gain, gives us claims on all the old provinces of Alexander. So we can click that as well. So you'll see here in our guy here, marching, marching down, he's in red because he is taking attrition, which will cost us manpower. And we are currently reinforcing. Uh, we need uh, 700 men to reinforce, but none will make it there because we are moving. Okay, so Carthage is requesting import of leather. Uh, yep, okay, we'll take that. It's going to give us a bit of money. <clears throat> and who has this? Uh, camels from Judea give us camel discipline. Oh, hang on. Import camels from the province of Hunger. We are not currently exporting it. We would gain camel discipline and earn. I'm not really going to use camels, so I'm going to decline that for now. Right, what I want to do here now is split the army. Now this guy, so he's going to take one attrition, there we go, he can go there for zero attrition, and he will stay here for five, but he can also go there for zero attrition as well, uh, it's not the same province, so we're going to send them both here. Now as you can see, we've got to pop up again because we've got no general, I know it's a separate army, we are going to uh, put this guy, Maggot, is he a uh, scorn? No, uh, he is, a, I'm going to put this guy there in as well. So pause this, uh, want me to kindly, is truly a kind soul, if there was ever any way to assist another citizen, he would do so. Interesting, so he gains the trait of kindly. So we click onto our ruler here, you can see now he's a kind fella. 
So the effects and command, well, it's the loyalty gain chances of, of plus 0 0.02. Uh, but effects of the ruler is the national free, freeman output of plus 5% as well. Yeah, whatever that means. And we've got our army down here as well. So the third stressors are still moving. And, so is, and we've got the second, and I think they are... Go two more units down here recruiting for their army as well. Okay, word is right that this year's harvest was exceptionally good in the city. Whilst the merchants may be holding their heads in their hands, the people rejoice at the plummeting price of bread. Perhaps next they will demand circuses. The people should rejoice so we gain a stability, or we should perhaps limit the drop in price. We get 205 gold. We're good for gold. I like stability because each level of stability gives you more effects. If you look at there, say for example, our national taxes of five percent. So we'll give us stability. Stability is two, and our national tax is now ten percent. So every other little modifier goes up, and as you get closer to zero and into the negatives of stability, it will go down. So we've got a few days yet before he's ready, and what he will do, he'll come through, and probably we'll look at him coming up here. Got a fort there that's going to need to be taken down, so we'll slot that guy there, we'll slot these guys through. So level 1 forts so only needs about 5,000 troops, so each level of fort requires at least 5,000 troops to um, besiege it. So a level 2 fort would be 10,000 troops minimum as well for the fort for that, it's okay. <coughs> so early doors, we've got Judea here. We can't make a, compl a claim yet, so I'm not going to be doing much in terms of that at all and uh, we are still building up as well we're making money which is good even with our troops being recruited we've got 20 more days down here to recruit another army it's only going to be a 10 stacker to start with not much and not very strong uh, we can actually give him a, an army and you know we are going to try and get this guy a uh, command he is a scorned family so if you notice there the person he should actually go now once we appoint him and you'll see he has his family is no longer annoyed and now another one we can do is uh, there's a thing called shock action so it's just like a um, tactic that you can select you got options here so currently we're a shock now our army's kind of evened between archers cavalry and uh, some heavy infantry as well so we're going to I like bottleneck neck does kind of work and it still looks the best I mean we get zero for the archers anyway uh, you can see here the light cavalry do damage mainly against arf, archers and chariots and other horse rather than any other units so I think we will probably just go for bottleneck <coughs> for this army and I think we'll do the same for uh, this army as well <coughs> now this guy has got no heavies primarily light infantry so skirmishing would suit him more uh, well we could actually do bottleneck as well uh, but 16% uh, we're gonna go skirmishing for this this one as well we've got another uh, what do they want gemstones gain the following bonus country civilization level we'll earn yep I'll take that no worries mate <coughs> excuse me I've got enough oratory power so we can probably try and do a trade route we still can't do iron uh, yeah oh hang on we can yep we can so we're now importing iron so that means I can now add some iron troops now I don't think if I go to here and try and import recruit to the army I now have available more because I've got iron which is pretty good I don't know if I want to because it's obviously going to take a while maybe we can uh, recruit into here a couple of units of uh, infantry if high heavy inventory if we need to not inventory uh, army maintenance costs yes that's going to go down we are still waiting on our value there so I'm going to take a pause here I'm going to play up a little bit ahead and come back to you when we're pretty much got our claims and waiting it out uh, for the next uh, little action hello and welcome back so we do have enough now got 224 oratory uh, points so we're going to go in here to um, these guys in the beer town we're going to try and subjugate well not really subjugate them we're going to conquer 
So we're going to go down here under covert actions and fabricate a claim. What we're going to we're going to fabricate it on. Oh, let's see, Sinai. Okay, and uh, that's been done. And now we can't go straight to war. We have to wait for our envoy to uh, return. But we can have our troops certainly ready to rock and roll. And what I'm going to do in anticipation of that is I'm going to split this guy up. One will head straight down and one will head there going forward. At the same time, now we have... Uh, well, I could have used that first. <laughs> okay, we've used two. I want to use an oratory power. Uh, let's have a look at... Oh, let's do it anyway. It's going to be there for future reference. I probably was a bit slow off the mark and should have used that before I uh, did all this. So we should be close to now being able to declare war. 17th of April. It might help if I unpause the game could be a something so we are now i think i did show you we are as you know able to import iron uh but we are holding off on that but it will mean that we can also with these armies here that do have heavy infantry we will be at least able to recruit and reinforce those as well so we got to wait until uh i think it's 17th of may for that as well now let's just click on this fella he's got no allies at all which is really good in this early game I'm surprised he has an ally down here with his neighbor which means it's going to be well it's not going to be an easy fight but we don't have to drag anybody else in now i have seen in other let's plays i think there's a potential that once a war has been declared they can still get allies oh the olympic games is another thing that comes into this every four years or so whatever it is i think it's four years in game the olympic games you get a choice to send someone uh, to them so what have we got? We've got two candidates. We've got a son of Apollo himself by the name of Magus and a stout fellow who calls him Marcus. So Magus, he's got seven, six, four, eleven. Oh, I'm gonna go for yeah, Magus. He will send Mag Magus and he'll bugger off the Olympic Games and just yeah, you know, nice and dandy. So we are now able to declare war. We are gonna take Sinai and we press OK and we are right as a rock and roll, Hoochie Coo. So he will go there. You will go there. You are going to go straight for that. You, my friend, are going to split again. You're going to go there with the seven and there with the eight as well, or the seven and the eight, just to cover these, and then we'll try and see how far. Now, each fort has a zone of control. So I will just try and show you this here if I can find the map mode for it. So you can see this fort here has a zone of control over these highlighted areas. So that means what it can do while it's uh, we are at war, it can actually turn these provinces, and you'll see here with this little line, starting to turn our provinces towards its side. But when we control it, it will automatically eventually turn all these provinces here, or the close ones, to its whoever owns and controls it. But it also means that we cannot go past these areas without first taking this fort and then again with this fort when we get further down and closer to it. But we should be able to get these. I think this guy might be able to get to uh, Toleha and Iboda, but we may be stuck there as far as it goes. These small ones shouldn't take long to go through. No, sweet. So uh, what we're going to do, just we're going to join these two back up. We just don't want to be surprised. Now we have a researcher who's needed. So I sent the guy who I sent to the Olympic Games was a researcher. So we'll sort him out we don't need an army we know that these two are going to be joining back up i can look and see they have okay so at the moment they've got five cohorts and only 8700 manpower so we should be able to scream through they may hire mercenaries and you'll see uh, at the moment there's no mercenaries near us but you can see on the map there are oh, olympics are done better luck next time but you know we gained five popularity uh for uh, faction leader because we sent some fella to the game because he looked like he came back with a mass beard so it must have been a tough one so we're going to send you to um Alath there as well now these provinces had been taken can we go to taloa yes and iboda yes but he's got to go through uh Mappus. and then that'll be pretty much as far as we go because obviously there's this fort here but um, uh, we probably won't be able to get to that unless this is sieged down. Well, we could come north, uh, south. I don't want to take a guy all the way around. So it'll be just a bit of a point. Uh, attrition. So what are you? 
Okay, so that unit looked like it was a uh, mercenary unit, so it's probably been hired. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is a fairly long video now. I've got a statue, we're grateful for honour. So what we're going to do, I'm going to leave it there. These guys are going to siege down uh, Alif very shortly and have done that now so i will come back to you in the next episode let me know your thoughts and things below i'm you know me playing these sort of games and jams in general i love these sort of games in terms i'm gonna put it out there be entertaining i don't know if you've played this game you got any hips hints and tips let me know if you've got any questions let me know i can easily find the information if i'm not sure as well but definitely worth a try all right folks so that is imperative rome i hope you've enjoyed this video today Smash that like button if you have, hit me down below with the comments, like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notifications of any new videos on this series and the other series. I am Parkira as always, thank you for joining me, take it easy Japanesey, kia kaha.